Even after five years, the Switch is still such an impressive handheld. Nintendo has definitely leveraged the Switch's popularity due to the Nintendo Switch online service, but problems with emulation as well as lack of content really drive customers like crazy. And I don't blame them. Banjo-Kazooie has a lot to share on its shoulders, and it is quite a big incentive for a lot of people. So let's take a look at Banjo-Kazooie on the Switch online and compare it to the original. I wanted to give my hugest thanks and sincerest love to two of my closest friends, Cody as well as Alex. It's because of them I was able to look at the Switch online uh, expansion pack, so I'm really grateful. Thank you guys. Quick TLDR if you just want to know how this is. It's quite decent, and I think a lot of people who just want to averagely play these games will have a nice time playing Banjo-Kazooie and revisit a lot of nostalgia. Stay tuned though if you want to go a lot more in depth and see what's going on with Banjo-Kazooie. So let's get one of the first things out of the way. Which version is Nintendo using for the Switch Online? And I'm pretty much led to believe they're using the original N64 port for a couple of reasons. One of the newer implementations of the Banjo-Kazooie Xbox Live Arcade version is that once you collect notes, exit a level, die, or anything like that, the notes are you know, collected as much as you can. But if you go back to the original, let's say you collect about 10 or 15 notes, you die or you exit the level, you come back, the, the notes are still there, but your score is kept. And that is usually a good indication that this is the N64 port. So let's go with the most obvious that a lot of people are gonna be talking about, and that's the graphics. What we do know is that Nintendo has implemented a smoothing filter to kind of smooth out a lot of the textures, some of the 3D ones, as well as the 2D. What's nice about the smoothing filter is that it looks really nice on 3D textures, but you do have some noticeable pixelation on 2D, and you can really tell there's a bit of dissonance between the 3D and the 2D graphics, and that's not something I, I personally like when it comes to N64 games. I really think the filter is most uh, keen for 3D games, and while this does have a lot of 3D elements, the 2D ones, it kind of, you know, stands out for you know, lack of a better term. This is one of the nice things about emulation and the frame rate for Banjo-Kazooie is pretty great actually. It's about capped at 30 FPS and it does stay pretty much at that buttery smooth level. The thing is about the Nintendo 64 section due to some uh, levels, uh, you do see some pretty big dips in uh, frame rate. I do know people mention about Rusty Bucket Bay where it has serious degradation, but I think Clanker's Cavern is also a great way when you first meet Clanker and you just see a huge dip in frame rate and it's just extremely noticeable. You could see between the two shots right here how extremely noticeable it is, how the Switch port keeps its 30 FPS, but the original has a lot of stuttering. I'm not gonna fault the N64 version just because it is pretty difficult to kind of keep frame rates with that kind of console. It wasn't really known for that, but it is something worth noting. I am surprised how good some of the emulation is actually. One of the really great indications that Nintendo did a decent job on the emulation is actually the original Jiggy splash screen when you see the title of Banjo-Kazooie. That's actually something that's not properly rendered on emulators, but of course in here, Nintendo was actually able to remedy that, and I'm very appreciative of that. However, I would have liked to see a little bit more retro filters akin to the original Nintendo Switch Online for the NES and the SNES, how that has retro filters. It would have been nice to see a proper scan line, maybe integer scaling to next neighbor to 4x or 5x scale. That would have been really nice to see, but since there's no options at all, but I guess we'll take what we can get. Now, I don't know if this is entirely true, but I felt like some of the fog has been missing, similar to some titles like Ocarina of Time, which also has problems. Let's take a look at Gruntilda's Cauldron. One of the very noticeable things I saw when you enter into her room is just the lack of ambience and fog looking into her room, and that was a significant problem that I had. I just felt the N64 version did a much better job introducing fog as well as atmosphere. I did notice that, that the horizon fog also looks a little bit odd. Right here you can tell Gruntilda on her broomstick where it just looks a little bit odd in my eyes, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys can tell me what you think about that one. A significant problem I do have with the Nintendo Switch Online are the controls, and for a couple of reasons. If you have the N64 controller, you don't need to look at this. But if you're using like, let's say, Switch Pro Controller or just your uh, Joy-Cons, 
that's where the problem introduces itself. There are no remappable buttons at all. Whatever the layout that Nintendo gave you is what you're going to be getting, and this is the problem that I have. The B and A buttons are actually completely diagonally different from the original N64, which also has another diagonal uh, position. And this does create a huge dissonance for me because I'm so used to pressing left diagonal instead of right, if, if that makes sense. And to not be able to remap that is a huge, huge problem. That's one of my biggest problems with this, is that you just can't remap anything when it comes into that. And here's another thing to note, there is some noticeable lag on the N64 version. Now, I don't know if this is due to Bluetooth, maybe it's not, but keep in mind on my Nintendo 64, I actually have a Bluetooth adapter that I made myself called the Blue Retro, and I've noticed a lot less lag on that Bluetooth than the Nintendo 64 Switch Online. So that does give me a bit of indication. There's probably lag from the Bluetooth to the Pro Controller, as well as the emulation itself. That's just something I really noticed, and it does bother me a little bit. The 30 FPS, though, does remedy quite a bit of the lag, just because it's a little bit smoother. You don't notice it as much, but lag is lag, and you will feel it. And for the final positive quality of life features, I do really enjoy save states, which allow you to save at any time using the minus button, and you can always restore them at any time as well. While you only have four slots, I think that is pretty more than enough for a lot of people. I don't think people are gonna be like heavily abusing it, so I think that's nice. While it is a feature that you always see in emulation, I don't really have a problem seeing this, and I think for a lot of people who just want to get through the game, come back to it very quickly, it's fine. But I do want to note though, on the Nintendo 64 version, after you get a couple jiggies, the game does save automatically. So regardless of what you do, the game does a pretty good job at frequently saving, so you really shouldn't have a problem there aside from save states. And that was pretty much it. I was pretty surprised how well the Switch Online port is. I know a lot of people have had problems with Ocarina of Time, which is a huge problem because of uh, the fog uh, that I've seen a lot of uh, Twitter users actually notice. But I will admit, I am pretty happy with this. I think for the casual Switch owner who just wants to dabble in N64 games, this is a nice touch. But what do you guys think? What are you gonna be playing Banjo-Kazooie on? Is the Switch Online gonna be getting your needs? Or would you just rather play it on an emulator or on the N64? Let me know down in the comments below and let's have a nice discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you do love a lot of my videos and comparisons, you can check some of the videos right here so you can see more of what I do. But I also wanted to thank these people who have uh, very much supported the channel as well as Tells Rob and a couple of other people. Thank you guys. I appreciate it, and I'll check you very soon.